Uh, hello guys, uh, please note that we are waiting for more participants to join this webinar. Uh, till that time, I'm sharing our social media platform link, our communities link and our official website link. So guys, go and follow us on our social media platform for upcoming webinar and workshop.
Hello, good morning, everyone. Etali, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, RJ. So when we are expecting to start? So we, we will start in few minutes. Okay, sure. Uh, okay, guys, let's start the webinar. Uh, guys, good morning and welcome you all in this uh, AI102 session. Myself, Archie, this said, I'm your host for this webinar. Guys, if you have any question and queries, please put question on chat box. We will dare to help you out. Moving ahead and talking mm -hmm. about event sponsor mm -hmm. that is Synergetics. So Synergetics India, one of kind co-porting learning solution company. Now you will get a question like who we are and what we're doing. So answering your question, we browse through our offering and also give comprehensive advisory service to client who wish to modernize their framework. Also, we educate, advise, implement and manage. Then the Synergetics solution offering that is persona based onboarding solution. Onboarding add-on solution, certification solution, certification add-on solution, reskilling solution, uh, imaging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, uh, latest technology training solution, sales pre-sales training solution, practice practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. Then what this Microsoft certification does, it will give you complete learning experience. You will get trained and build confidence to appear for the exam and get certified. That is get recognized. Uh, this is scaling journey. Here you can advance yourself. First you have to complete fundamental certification. Then you can go with the advanced role based certification. Then you can go with the expert level certification. In this fundamental certification, we are providing five types of certification that is AZ 900, AI 900, DP 900, PL 900 and SC 900. In this advanced level certification, we are providing you AZ 104, DP 203, SC 300 and more. Here you can see on my screen. In expert level certification, we are providing you AZ305, SC100, PL600, and AZ400.
Uh, also, we have special certification which we provide AZ120, uh, AZ140 and AZ220. Guys, if you want any certification, you can connect us. I already share contact details on chat box. Uh, then certification offering certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. Also, we do provide certification add on and onboarding add on like short duration and modules. Moving ahead and today training is organized and handled by ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. In this ATC community, we have emerging technology community for all. Then Azure Tech community for Pune Kars. Uh, emerging technology community for Surat Kars. Azure Tech community for Nagpur Kars. Guys, just you have to install the Meetup app in your device or in your phone. There you can follow our communities. Then you have to follow code of conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note that participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. Uh, we will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. Uh, today's speaker for this training is Sonu Satyadas. He is a Microsoft certification trainer uh, and currently work with Synergetics as a practice head. Then agenda for this webinar, you will get no more about AI 102 certification and benefit of it. So in a one day webinar, we are providing you one day webinar uh, which include module overview and study material. Then coming with self learning plan, uh, we are providing you free of course complimentary learning achievement batch. In this batch, you will get study material and overview of the module. Then coming with mentoring and exam prep session. If you have any question and queries, you can uh, submit your question on our feedback form. Then knowledge assessment. Uh, by before end of this session, we will we are providing you assessment link. You just have to give your exam and test your knowledge. In this webinar, we are providing you free of cost learning achievement batch. You just have to follow the step and you can get the activated batch. Here, here you can see the our upcoming webinar details. Uh, interested participants can go and register yourself. Please note that registration is mandatory to all of us. Make sure guys you are following our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for relevant update and upcoming webinar. Oh, uh, thank you. Now I would like to hand over this mic. Our speaker, he will continue ahead. Yeah, thank you, Archie. <clears throat> so hello everyone. I hope I'm audible to all of you. So myself, uh, Sonu. I'm the speaker for today's session. And let me share the screen. I hope the screen is visible to all of you. So this course is AI 102 designing and implementing a Microsoft Azure AI solution. This course is fo focusing on building the AI application and applications around Microsoft Azure AI services. So we will be focusing. The AI services available in the Microsoft Azure Cloud platform. Myself Sonu and I am the assistant manager technology in Synergetics, uh, primarily working on the cloud and open source technologies and the artificial intelligence. Mostly I take care of uh, the cloud and AI uh, assignments now. So I'm a Microsoft uh, certified trainer on the Azure cloud. So I have completed my Azure administration solutions architect 
Azure Developer and Azure AI Engineer certifications. When you complete the AI 102 certification, and you will also get the Azure AI Engineer certification. Now about this course, uh, this course is more about the uh, AI services available on the Azure platform, including the Azure Open AI services. So one module is uh, covering the entire open AI services on Azure. And you will uh, see how practically we can build applications on uh, the uh, Azure Cloud uh, AI services, how we can integrate the Azure AI services on our applications how to use the rest apis and sdks for that how we can train and customize the ai models which is available and we are expecting participants who is who have basic understanding of uh, programming and uh, uh, basic knowledge of artificial intelligence since uh, this course is around uh, AI. The demos will be on uh, C sharp or Python. So if you, when you go and uh, uh, continue the course the, of the AI 102, or when I go and do the course of AI 102, so you need to do the codings in uh, either in C sharp or Python because all the demos designed. Uh, uh, in in Python as well as a C sharp language. So if you are from some other domain or other uh, background, so you may have to understand a couple of programming fundamentals to implement this demos. And this course is uh, the complete AI 102 course is for four days of course, and there we will have different. Uh, uh, modules, including the fundamentals of AI service, then vision services, language services, then the generative AI solutions, then uh, building the uh, document intelligence services. So these are the modules which we usually cover in the complete four days of certification. But in this one day, we will be covering the important aspects of uh, this course and we'll be picking up a couple of modules and implementing that. We'll understand how this course describes about the AI services on the uh, Azure Cloud. So we'll be starting with the initial module, which is the introduction to the AI service. So in this course, primarily we will be looking what is artificial intelligence and what are the different services available on Azure for AI and how this Azure AI services we can make use in our enterprise applications. So what is artificial intelligence so this is one of the most commonly used term nowadays because we are hearing uh, more about the artificial intelligence or artificial intelligent products or services uh, from internet so it is a maybe a good news or a bad news because uh, yes people can use the artificial intelligence for good things as well as for bad things. So recently also we had uh, we heard a news about a deep fake about uh, a video. Which is also an artificial intelligence generated video. So every day we are using or we are hearing about the artificial intelligence. 
knowingly or unknowingly, we are also using the artificial intelligence services. So going forward, you will come to know what are the different services we use uh, in our day to day life uh, in context of uh, AI services. So what is artificial intelligence? So if you are coming from uh, a non technical background of your if you're new to the artificial intelligence, you can understand it's just an application or a service that mimics the capabilities of a human being. So usually a human can understand the uh, different uh, objects from his environment. It may be an uh, uh, image or it may be an uh, some other object. It may be a video or it may be a text or anything. So he will be able to understand the uh, images, videos, text, and he can interpret this and make uh, responses for that. So if you see an image, you can see, you can say that what is there inside the image, right? So if you see an image of a building, you can say which building it is. Or if you are able, to, or if you are seeing an image of a person, you can say who that person is. If it is a non-celebrity or a well-known person, you can easily say that who is that particular person, right? So which means your brain is recognizing the person from that particular image right or if you listen an audio you can understand which language it is or if it is an unknown language you can also respond that this is an unknown language which i cannot understand and we have to translate this into a different language to understand Right. Or if you are uh, uh, aware about or if you know multiple languages, whenever you hear some uh, text or whenever you, you hear some uh, uh, audio, you will be able to interpret that into your mother tongue because usually we understand things in our mother tongue. Right. So even if I hear something in a different language, we understand our brain automatically understand that in our mother tongue. And then when we speak, we first prepare in our mother tongue and then respond in the in the different language. So our brain is doing this kind of interpretations, translations and everything. Right. Or if you read a text, you will be able to understand from that script whether it is a printed script or it's a handwritten text what is the meaning of that text what which language it is used all this right and also you will be able to respond to the events for example if you are sitting in a room and if the room temperature is uh, increased or decreased for example if the room temperature is increased above 30 degree or 35 degree and you feel hot so immediately you will go and switch on the ac if it, if the ac is there right or if the temperature is going way, uh, down maybe below 18 or 16 then you will feel very cold and you will go and turn off the ac or fan right whatever it is so which means your brain is taking a decision from the events that okay the temperature is decreased or increased so i have to go and turn off or turn on the ac or fan so that is a decision that you are taking or immediately if there is a fire accident happens your brain will understand that there is something happen we have to immediately use some fire extinguisher to but that right so that means your brain is taking decisions based on the signals coming to it so these are human capabilities so now the question can i application or uh, can i build an application uh, that that can do this things or is there any application which is already available that can do this things for me such 
intelligent applications or services we can say artificial intelligent services or models so there are different uh, ai services or models available which can handle the image data which can, can handle the text data which can uh, uh, converse in different languages which can take decisions or which can respond to certain uh, events like anomalies so ai developers or ml developers has created different uh, machine learning models for handling the image data text data audio data or the streaming data for decision making so such applications or services we simply call as ai applications or ai services so for example uh, now we have the cleaning robots available so you just need to turn on the device and put in the ground so it will go to every room and clean that particular room right so that means the device is so intelligent to understand the areas where to clean what to clean how to clean so if there is uh, some rest or if there is some dust what type of cleaning has to use there maybe a close simple cloth wash or vacuum clean or maybe dry wash what kind of cleaning has to be used that intelligently to take a decision and do that so these are uh, ai services another example if you go to airport now you don't need to go and show the uh, uh, passport or aadhar or any other id card you just need to go in front of a cam and it, it it will take a photo of yours and it immediately connect to the central repository which is uh, storing the informations about your aadhar and other things which is completely linked so if it is a known person it will takes the details of that means if your details are there in the repository then it will takes the details and identifies that this person is a person exist and this person has booked a ticket from this airport and that it will allow you to go inside right so so that means it uses artificial intelligence to automate that passenger entry or if you simply simple example if you say if you take a photo in your mobile the mobile's camera application will create uh, rectangles around the faces of uh, the people that means if you are taking a photo of your friend so it will create a, a rectangle where it has detected that particular face right so that is also an artificial intelligence feature so that means knowingly or unknowingly we are using artificial intelligence everywhere so what is the base for the artificial intelligence ultimately data science which is the application of mathematical and statistical techniques to analyze the data is acting as the base for the artificial intelligence because these artificial intelligence models requires information to process because it must be trained then only it can respond right so if you have not learned to use a device or a uh, language or anything you cannot understand right so what to do so suppose if i am giving you a device and you don't know how to use that device you have not practiced to use that device then if i am suddenly giving you a device and asking you to operate it you cannot do that so for that we have to train so you have to be trained then only you will be able to use that right so that means artificial intelligence models also need to be trained with a large amount of data 
this data can be labeled data or unlabeled data but you have to train the artificial intelligence models with a lots of data means large amount of data and the artificial intelligence models will understand from that data what are what is the patterns and how to predict things so how to generate the responses means the predictions are the responses so how you will prepare this data for the training because we have said without the data you cannot train the model so what data you will be providing and what will be the structure of the data and how you prepare the data for uh, the training. So there we use data science. So you'll be applying some mathematical and statistical techniques to analyze the data, prepare the data, and then you will be using this data to train the models. To train the models, we use a technique called machine learning. So in this, we use the data which is provided by data science along with some algorithms to train that data and create the models. So there are different algorithms we use. It may be a classification algorithm, regression algorithm, or clustering algorithm. So there are different algorithms. Algorithms are simple statistical uh, methods or calculations uh, executed. So it will be using some of the uh, algorithms that handles the data differently. And it will produce the models or it will uh, create the models by training the uh, algorithms or by using the algorithms to train this models with the data. Once the model is trained with the data, then it is ready to consume. Then you will be deploying this models, trained models into some web services and you can access those models using some endpoint, maybe it could be any HTTP endpoint. So through which you will be able to make a request and the request will be goes inside the model. Model will understand what are the different inputs received. Accordingly, it will be generating the response. So artificial intelligence contains the applications and agent services that consume this models so the base of artificial intelligence is the data because without data you will not be able to build the model so you need vast amount of data it may be a labeled or unlabeled data and you will be using the algorithms along with this data to train this models once the model is trained then it can predict results suppose if you are <clears throat> not aware about the martial arts for example karate kung fu or any other martial arts if you are not trained and if i go and ask you okay can you show some martial arts sequences or martial arts steps you cannot do that but if you are trained for long period and you, a trainer has given you the instruction how to do that, what are the mistakes you make, how to correct it, all these things means you, if you have a, uh, if you if you have if you are trained for many years, when I go and ask you, can you show a step in the martial arts, you'll be able to show it very easily because you are trained person, right? Similarly, if you are a dancer. If you are a dancer who practicing the dance for many years, I can come and ask you, can you show one step of dance? You will be able to easily show that. But if you are not trained, and if I go and ask you, 
can you do a step for me and you may not be able to do and if you are doing that it may not be correct right so that is what you need to understand about the training so training means you have to make this model perfect by providing lots of amount of data retrain the model for multiple times to make the results correct so like if i ask you to learn a martial art steps whenever you do it for first time it, it will not be correct then we will tell okay it's not the correct way to do that you have to use some other steps maybe you have to put your hands in this way you have to keep your legs in this side like that so every time when you make mistakes your master will be correcting you once you learned correctly then your master will say that okay now you are ready to show that step right so that's the same thing that you that we are going to apply in the machine learning also once we provide the data the algorithm will use the data to make predictions if the result is not the expected one so i'm expecting a result 100 but it is producing a result 50 which means I have not reached that level. My prediction is not correct. Then we will retrain the model with the data. And next time when I make a prediction, it uh, produce a result 65. Yes, we are close to 100, but still it's not correct. So again, we will train the model with the set of data. And then we will again test whether it is now producing correct result. So now it is giving the result 75. Now we are improved, but not reach the level. So again, we will retrain the model and then test it. And this time it is giving maybe 85 percentage, right? So that means, yes, we are almost there. We are almost correct. But still, if you want to improve the performance, you can again retrain the model. You can improve the accuracy of the model by retraining it with the multiple types of data and uh, large amount of data so again if you retrain and test it it will produce maybe 95 percentage or 95 so my expected result is 100 but it is it is able to predict up to 95 or 97 or 98 100 percentage result we cannot expect from any systems but yes if i'm getting 95 percentage which means yes we are very close to the expected result so i can say that yes you are ready to serve so that means the model is ready for consumption right so that is what machine learning so we need to train the model to make accurate predictions so what are the different skills required to become an artificial intelligence uh, developer or engineer or AI engineer? So you should have the coding skills because if I have a artificial intelligence model or machine learning model readily available, how you go and consume this in our applications? So the model is just a programmed entity. So how you go and use this? Suppose if you are creating a chatbot or you are creating a web application or you are creating a mobile application. So you want to integrate that AI functionality inside your application. So for that, you need to have the coding skills. So you, you can be a C sharp developer, Python developer, JavaScript developer, Java developer, or maybe any other language because these trained models are available as rest apis means you can go and consume those uh, models functionalities using rest apis some of the machine learning models also available uh, using sdks means programming sdk programming libraries available through the libraries you will be able to 
invoke the mo published models. For example, if I want to consume the open AI service, which is one of the most popular uh, generative AI service. So you want to consume the open AI service. You can either use the REST API endpoints or you can use the programming libraries like classes and functions to invoke that. So that means you will be able to consume the published models using REST APIs or SDKs. And SDKs may not be available for every language. Most of the popular languages, you will be able to find out the SDKs in like a C Sharp, Python, Node.js, and Java. But if you say, okay, I want to consume this from a PHP application, or I want to consume this from maybe a C++ application, you may not be able to get the SDK for that. You may have to go and use REST API because you can consume these models either by using REST APIs or SDKs. And DevOps is an important part of the development and deployment. So if you are building AI application or a traditional web or uh, mobile application, you can deploy or you can use the DevOps technologies to manage the source code and the implementing the continuous deployment pipeline. So uh, you can also use the CI CD pipelines for the creation and deployment of AI models also. Not only the consumer applications, but also the AI models also you will be able to deploy using the DevOps, which we call as uh, MLOps. Conceptual, conceptual AI understanding. So what are the things we need to understand if you want to become an AI engineer or AI developer? So what is model training and inferencing? So what is mean by model training? So typically when you build an artificial intelligence model, as I have mentioned, you need to pump large amount of data, maybe millions or billions of data you have to use to train the model. But how you will verify the accuracy of that model? So in the previous slide, I have explained that after you train the model, you will check whether the prediction is correct or not. And you and I said it is initially giving you a result of 50 percentage. Later to give you 60 percentage or 70 percentage like that. So how we are validating the result of the model prediction. So we are using large amount of data to train the model. And for validating also, we have to use some amount of data. So suppose if I have 100 records, I can use maybe 80% of the records, means 80 records for training the model. And remaining 20 records, I can use for validating it. Suppose when the model is trained using that 80 records, I can train the model, sorry, I can test the model or validate the model by using the remaining 20 data. So I'll provide the first data and then verify whether the result is coming as expected. Then I'll try with the second data and then check whether it is producing correct result of, or not. So that means we have to divide the available data into two parts. One major set of data will be used for model training and another small set of data is used for inferencing or validating the data. So whenever we train the model, it is also need to uh, validate it. So whenever you get the data, maybe you are using the data available on internet 
or you will be using the data available through some data sources uh, in your organization. So whenever you use these data, do not use 100% of that data for training. You have to keep some data for validating the results. So you, it can be uh, 80, 20 percentage or 90, 10 percentage, 90 percentage for training, 10 percentage for validation or 80 percentage for training, 20 percentage for validating or 75 percentage for training and 25 percentage is for validating. So you can divide the data into two parts. Probability and confidence score. So how we will verify whether this model is ready for consumption. If you are practicing martial arts, when we can say that you are ready for doing a show, or if you are practicing dance, when we will say that you are ready for a show, because we have an expectation. Suppose if I am a ma master, a martial arts master or a dance master, we have an expectation, okay, if this person is reaching at least 90 percentage perfectly it, it is doing, I can say that, okay, he is ready for a show. The remaining 10 percentage means 100 percent accuracy we cannot achieve in one go. So going forward, later he practice, practice, practice and learn the remaining 10 percentage. But the initial uh, process or initial training process, we are expecting it has to give a result at least 80 percentage or 85 percentage. Uh, if it is accurate, we can say it is ready for consumption. So in models deployment case also we consider the same. There is a probability score where we uh, uh, say that, okay, if it is able to produce a uh, correct result, uh, uh, at least 75 percentage or 80 percentage or 85 percentage, then we will be able to uh, publish this model for con consumption. The confidence score is a term that is used to uh, represent the probability uh, result. That means uh, this is a value which is typically represented uh, as a number between 0 and 1. Which means if the model is able to predict a result with a confidence score of 0 0.90, which means it is 90 percentage confident. If the model is confident or if the model is predicting the result with a confidence score of 0 0.75, which means it is 75 percentage confident about that, okay, this is this object. For example, if I'm giving a photo of a person and telling the model, can you identify this person? Then the model will say that, okay, I am sure that this person is Mr. XYZ and I'm sure that uh, it is Mr. XYZ and my confidence ratio or confidence uh, rate is 0 0.78, which means 78 percentage, I'm sure that this is that person. Remaining 22 percentage, there may be a mistake, right? Or if I say, okay, I am uh, translating the text. So I'm translating the text from one language to another language. While translating, I will give you a confidence score of 0 point maybe 8, which means 80 percentage that translation is correct means I'm sure that it may be 100 percentage correct, but I am sure that it is 80 percentage correct. Remaining 20 percent, maybe there is a error or there is maybe some mistake. So I am sure that this is uh, 80 percentage or 70 percentage correct. So that is provided by a confidence score. So the model is saying that I am guaranteeing that or I am giving you a confidence score that tells how accurately I'll be able to 
predict. Responsible AI and ethics is an important uh, parameter that we have to understand in today's world because now we are building most of the smart and intelligent applications with the help of open AI, sorry, uh, uh, AI services available in uh, uh, Azure or open AI or AWS or anywhere. But how we are going to consume this model or how we are going to utilize this? For example, and it's a very simple, I can say, a simple example I can say, if I am trying to uh, train the model with the faces of a particular person, because I am planning to implement a face recognition application in my organization for attendance purpose. So what my intention is, whenever that person comes into the entry gate, it takes a photo and automatically mark the attendance. So for that, the attendance marking system should be driven by an AI model. And this AI model should be aware about the faces of the employees. So you have to train the model with the face images of that employees. But using the face images of an employee is a concern about the privacy and security, right? Because yes, nobody can use my image for training that model, right? Because without my consent, they cannot use it because it's my privacy. My face is my identity or my privacy. So they cannot use it. So if they want to use that, even if I'm working in that organization and if the organization wants to use my photos for training the model, they have to ask my consent. Right, or they should have, uh, they should provide the information why they are going to use my photo, where they are going to use it, what is the intent for doing that. So all things to be clear because it's a pri it's a matter of privacy and security, right? So most of the modern AI applications and services deals with the privacy information, maybe the uh, patient's ho uh, hospital information or the uh, identity information like a biometrics or face or maybe the uh, uh, identity numbers like a PAN numbers or emails, phone numbers and all, right? So without the consent of the person, we cannot use that. Or if you if we are using, we have to say that where we are using and for what purpose we are using. Otherwise, it will be illegal. So now most of the organizations who provide the AI services, including Microsoft, is driving the responsible AI principles, which means if you are trying to use the AI models provided by Microsoft you have to give a consent that I will not use this model for uh, uh, any other illegal purposes. I will use it for this purpose. You have to, while, while consuming certain AI models, like uh, maybe for face API. So whenever you use face API, you have to give a consent that, okay, I'm going to use face API for building so and so type of application and I will not use it for any other illegal purposes. So you have to give a consent. Then only Microsoft will allow you to use the face API because face API is used for face detection purposes. So if you want to build an application using the face recognition, then you have to use a face API. So a face API model if you want to consume then you have to tell Microsoft that I will use it only for legal purposes. I will not make any illegal 
problems about this uh, around this application or model so there are certain guidelines defined by organizations for building ethical ai applications that is responsible ai because if i am making an application ai application which is only usable to selected type of people some people cannot use it some people can only use it i cannot say that it is a valid or uh, uh, ethical application because suppose i have created an ai application which is only usable to uh, people who have a vision means who can see then what about a person who is who has some vision issue or vis visually impaired person if they have some vision problem we have to provide some alternate mechanism to work with the application for example it's very simple if i am giving a keyboard for entering the data the virtual keyboard or maybe the keyboard for entering the data but for a visually impaired person there is no option for typing because he cannot see the screen for typing right a blind person cannot see the screen and he cannot use the touch screen for typing then what alternate need to be provided for giving the input suppose in the maybe in the application it is asking for enter your first name type your first name here so for typing the screen will uh, sorry the keyboard will appear in the screen but he cannot type because he is blind then he how he will go and enter the first name so there should be an alternate mechanism like a microphone so that he can and uh, speak and the system will understand and convert that to text so then i can say yes this application or a service is considering all type of people i'm just giving you an example right so when we build the applications it has to consider all type of people it has to consider the privacy and safety of the users data there should not be any bias and somebody has to take the responsibility of the ai driven application because what if something happens with a driverless car suppose you know about driverless cars which is driven by ai so what if there is an accident happens who will be responsible for that the car manufacturer or the passenger or the user or the organization who is consuming the products of the car manufacturer means the cars who will be responsible for that incident because we are trusting the ai that it will drive the cars carefully right so somebody should take responsibility of those incidents or the applications so in ai principles or responsible ai principle it is clearly defined that what are the different uh, uh, considerations we have to not at the time of building the ai applications so here you can see some of the responsible ai principles fairness reliability and safety privacy and security inclusiveness transparency accountability as i have mentioned fairness it should consider means it should be fair enough to every type of user there should not be any bias which means if you are building an ai application that is only considering people from a specific category or specific gender specific ethnicity so those things are not allowed because an application should consider everyone as same that is fairness reliability and safety so how reliable is the ai application 
because consider a scenario that you are creating an AI, the face detection application, and using that application, we are trying to detect the face of criminals. So you, suppose you are putting an, a camera in front of a shopping mall, and whenever a person enter the mall, it uh, capture the photo of that person and send it to the AI system. And the AI system is going to compare this photo with the database uh, with the police. So they have all the criminals uh, photos. So it will be going to compare the user's photo with the criminal's photo. And if the criminal's photo is identified, then we can simply block that user and arrest him. But what happens if a person's photo is by mistake matching or similar to the photo of a criminal? Because there are similarities in faces, similarities, not exactly, but yes, similarities should be there. So what if a noble person face is matching with a criminal's face? Can you think what will happen? So he will get arrested and he will be sent to jail, right? Because the AI system is detecting his face and matching with the, the, the face of a criminal. And there are some similarities. So because of that, the AI system will immediately give an alert that this person is a criminal, but he may not be. So he, he may be a noble person. He, he has just visited the mall. But because the AI system is saying that this person face is matching with a criminal's face, so he will get arrested. So that means we cannot rely on that particular system. So it has to be considered. Privacy and security, I have already discussed that some of the sensitive informations cannot be disclosed. Inclusiveness, as I have mentioned, it should uh, consider even uh, visually impaired people also. Okay, So not only for normal people, and if the people have some problems with vision or hearing or anything, we should consider them also. That is means it should include everyone. Transparency means an AI system should be transparent, which means if, if you see there are uh, uh, what stock marketing applications that give you recommendations that you can go and invest in this particular share or invest in this particular market. But on what basis it is giving that recommendation? It's simply randomly giving you the recommendation or it is analyzing and studying the market correctly, understanding this uh, uh, company's uh, past year's records and then giving you the suggestion. So on what basis it is giving this recommendation? It has to be transparent to the user, right? So simply, okay, you go and invest in this. It's not acceptable. So it should be transparent on what basis it is giving the decision or recommendation. So that should be clear. Accountability is what I said. If an, an autonomous car is crashed, and who will be responsible for that? Who is accountable for that? So that needs to be considered. Machine learning, as I have mentioned, machine learning is the process of building the models by training the data with a set of algorithms. So it uses a large set of data along with certain algorithms to train that data and create the predictive models. The algorithms 
used by the models can be a classification or a regression or a clustering algorithm or anything. So classification simply means it is just a tell you whether it is coming into this particular category or not. Yes or no. Regression simply give you a number like if we want to predict a number like uh, so next year what can be the uh, number for production suppose if we are producing the bicycles or we are producing the umbrellas so it depends on the weather conditions and the other parameters how many bicycles or how many umbrellas we have to produce so i need that prediction number so i can go with the a regression algorithm or regression model right so clustering means it's it's a unsupervised uh, learning where it uh, categorizes a similar set of data and create a group or create a cluster so clustering means it we are providing lots of data without any label so now it is a responsibility of the model to go and classify that or uh, group that models into certain categories or certain clusters. Means it will group the similar uh, type of data and create a cluster. So that is the clustering algorithm. So classification, as I have mentioned, there will be a class like a person is a diabetic or not. So based on his health conditions like uh, heart, uh, heartbeat, sugar level, the other inf uh, informations, we will come to a prediction that this person is diabetic or ni not diabetic. So there is two classes, diabetic and non-diabetic. So this person comes in which class? It is a diabetic or non-diabetic, right? So that is a classification algorithm or classification method right so that means we use different types of algorithms to train the model and create uh, train the model with the data and create a final result which is our uh, machine learning model and this model is able to predict something so it is just identifying the patterns from the data and based on the training data, it will make the predictions. So once you have trained the model, you have to go and deploy the model to access uh, this models from the other applications. The Azure AI services. We are coming to our main topic, which is the Azure AI services. So the so far, whatever we have discussed is an introduction part, which gives you an idea about what is artificial intelligence, what is a responsible AI, and what is machine learning. So now coming to the AI services. In Azure, we have a set of Azure AI services available, which we can call as pre-packaged AI solutions, which we can directly integrate into our applications. Means you don't need to go and provide any training data. You don't need to build the machine learning models. You don't need to provision any infrastructure for running this machine learning model, nothing is required. There are some predefined, pre created models available. What you want to consume or which type of service you want to consume, you just need to create an instance of that and start using it directly. There is no training required, there is no infrastructure setup required. Right, because these models are 
pre trained machine learning models microsoft has already trained these models with a large amount of data so there are some categories of uh, ai services we have language services which can perform the text analysis question answering language understanding and translation we have speech services which is capable to per perform speech recognition speech synthesis speech translation and speaker recognition we also have vision services which will be processing the image and video data means image and video analysis image classification object detection and optical character recognition generative ai models which is available as open ai so we have the uh, open ai models available generally and microsoft is partnered with open ai so that the open ai's generative models are now available in azure also so you can use the generative ai models of open ai in azure platform so they are capable for generating the text generating the images generating the audio and so on so means it is capable to generate new data because that's why it is called a generative ai and we have some other azure ai services something like a ai search then uh, document intelligence okay so because there are some supplementary services like a document intelligence service which is uh, previously called as form recognizer because if you want to extract the documents or extract the informations from the pdf documents or excel documents or word documents we can use the document intelligence service because in older days we used to write uh, things in paper or we print uh, hard copies of the invoices bills received etc but now everything is computerized so if you want to read those informations from bills receipts or vouchers we can use the document intelligence service so it will be able to extract the informations from those documents ai search is a data mining tool which help you to extract information from a data source like a cosmos db or blob storage or some other uh, data service servers like a uh, sql database and so on so these are the different uh, ai service categories we have language speech vision generative services and applied ai services like uh, uh, document intelligence and ai search which we will discuss in detail in the coming modules so the coming modules are focusing on different uh, ai service categories so that's the reason i have not explained them here in detail as i have mentioned azure ai search is an is a uh, ai driven uh, data mining tool or knowledge mining tool so what is the importance of this ai search is it is capable to go and extract information from a data source which means it can be a database a relational database like a sql server or it can be a no sql database like a cosmos db or it can be some files like a pdf files or word files uploaded into some storage location and the ai service is capable to load this data from the data source as you can see in this picture it is 
extracting this data from the data source and then creating an index. So why index is created? Because it uh, needs to search the data within this documents or within this data source. Mm -hmm. So for that, it require an index because any query operations that you do, it will be first performed against an index to identify the correct location of the data and then it will go and extract the data from the data source right so like our book will have an index in the first page right so the index will contains the chapters list and their starting page number so that if i'm saying okay i want to go to fifth chapter it will directly go to that particular page number by looking into the index right or if you are technically saying if you are a database user azure database user or cosmos db database user you can see we create indexes also right so so that whenever we make search query you can make the search very faster by creating indexes So that's the end of the first module. This module we have discussed the basic AI concept, which talks about what is artificial intelligence, what is responsible AI, what is machine learning, what are the different uh, models types available in Azure, and finally we have ended up with the AI search, which is the data mining or knowledge mining service on Azure. So going forward, we'll talk about the AI search and the other uh, AI services in detail. So we have different uh, modules available. So I'll be we'll be covering a couple of modules, uh, which is important here. Because in one day, it is not possible to cover all these uh, modules. So if you see, uh, if I want to create some of this uh, AI services, you can go to the Azure portal. And this is the Azure portal, which you can log in using portal.azure.com. Using your Azure credentials, you can log into this. And then you can go to the left side. Here we have the uh, all services. There we have a section called AI and machine learning. So left side, you can see a category called AI and machine learning. When you click on this AI and machine learning, you will see all the available AI services. The AI search, anomaly detector, computer vision, custom vision, face API, language service, Azure Open AI, speech services, then bot services, content moderator, document intelligence, and so on. Right. So there are different AI services provided by Azure. If I want to see the list of services in one dashboard, you can go and click on this Azure AI services, which will give you a single dashboard. Yeah. So here, what you see is the list of AI services. If you want to create an instance of the AI service, you can directly create it from this dashboard itself. Suppose if I want to use face API, you can use it here. Means you can create it from here.
So one simple example, what I can do, I'll just create, I'll show you how we can create a face API. Let me try to create it. I'm creating a resource group, AIRG. And I can give a name for this resource. This is already used. Okay, maybe okay, so here we have different pricing tiers available. So each pricing tier will give different uh, uh, features. And you can see there is a free pricing tier, but there is a limit applied on uh, this like uh, 20 calls per minute and 30k calls per month that means in one month you can make 30000 calls and uh, 20 calls per minute okay this is usually used for dev and test scenarios but if you are looking for production scenarios you can go for standard and the uh, enterprise so standard and, and enterprise, you can see both are providing 10 calls per second, but the speed and the accuracy will be different because here the infrastructure used for running the standard services will be different and the enterprise service will be different. So enterprise services will give more features and uh, uh, speed compared to the standard services, means the latency for invoking that will be less in case of enterprise services and the other features also like including the security network configurations and so on so here i don't need to configure anything specific just create Let this create. As you can see, it is now created. You can see this is the face uh, API service created. Okay, then. So now we can try out this in Vision Studio. Vision Studio is a portal which is uh, helping us to try out some of the uh, vision and face related APIs. So here you can log in with your credentials and you will be able to see okay there is no subscriptions associated check
it's not showing the resource what I have created here. The one which I have created in the portal is not showing here. If you want, we can create one from here also. So here I can create a resource from here itself. So here I can select my subscription. So I'm just giving the name as maybe cognitive service. And here the resource group, I can say AIRG, the same. And location is to us and pricing tier, I just say free. So it's not showing this resource there. It may be ju just now only I have created. Okay, works. It's maybe the free resource I have already consumed. So inside this uh, resource group, I'm going to create a new resource of type cognitive because here the face API itself is a cognitive service type. I can create this with a S0 pricing tier. Let's see whether it is creating or not. Yes, the resource is created. You can see this. I'm going to set this as the default resource. So I have set this as the default resource. Now I can go back to the home page and here in the face API section, can you see here we have a face section. We can detect the faces in an image. Just try. And from here I can choose any of this image. Like if I want to detect this here, this is a sample photo which they have provided. If you want, you can upload your own photo. So here you can see this is detecting a face and it is says that there is no face mask, right? And the, usually the response comes in this format, as you see, face landmarks and other things. Mask type is equal to no mask. Nose and mouth covered, false. But if you see this one, it says face mask, yes. Face mask covering nose and mouth, yes. Right? Because it is detecting there is a face mask there, right? So this is done with the help of artificial intelligence. So there are two faces detected, face one and face two. Both the faces have no mask in it. So these are very, very simple artificial intelligence use case. So we can use this uh, artificial intelligence models in our applications and services. Okay. So that is the introduction about the AI services. So we have discussed what is AI and machine learning, the cognitive services or the AI services available in Azure. And we have just created the AI services we have seen here. One of the AI service we have created that is Face API. And in the Vision Studio, we have tried how this cognitive service is helping us to detect the face. The other options we will try later. So currently, you can see there are uh, some images which is provided. We have tried to detect the faces in that particular image. Okay, so that's the end of first module. And now we can take a small break of 10 minutes. And after the small break, we will continue the session with the next module. Okay. So now let's go 
for a short break. Uh, hello guys, I shared the complimentary learning achievement best. So guys go and redeem your badge. Guys, first you have to sign in on Microsoft Learn account and then you can go with that fourth uh, step URL and you can redeem your badge. Uh, those who are done with the batch put down on chat box so I can see who are done with the batch. 
if anyone still remaining facing problem so, so let me know on chat box Guys, if anyone facing problems, so let me know on chat box. Guys, those who are still remaining, put down on chat box, please.
Guys, please put done, jo, those who are done with the batches. Uh, sir is coming in few minutes till that please uh, do your redeem your badge.
Hello. Yes, sir. Okay, can I continue? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's move to the next module. This module is talking about the vision services in Azure AI services. So here primarily we will see how we can analyze and manipulate images, creating custom vision model, detect and recognize faces, and analyze video. The image analysis is a feature provided by the Azure Vision Service. If you noticed, when we have discussed about the pre-trained models or pre-trained uh, uh, cognitive services on Azure, we have discussed there is an there is a vision service that is capable to handle the images and videos. Means, if you want to analyze the images describe the images or detect the objects in the image. We can use the vision service. So vision service has a capability of image analysis. So in image analysis, what it is going to analyze or what it is going to do? It is generating a caption and a tag for the image. So if there is an image of a person who is standing in front of a building or in, in a street or something. So it will be able to give you a descriptive caption, like what is that image all about? So it is an image of a person standing in front of the building. So that kind of description can be given. And also it is able to generate different tags. Tags means what are the different objects or scenes that it has found then uh, it, it will be giving a list of tags for that for example building a person shoes street cloud sky and that these are some of the tags that is generated by uh, that can be generated by the vision service the object detection is another feature inside the image if there are certain objects maybe if, if it is an image of a table that uh, on top of the table you can see a laptop and a mobile phone and maybe a lamp okay so it will tell you that there are some objects. There is a table, there is a lamp, there is a laptop, there is uh, what to say, uh, mobile and so on. So this means object detection, means it is able to detect the different objects within that particular uh, image. People detection means it will be able to identify the people means not recognizing the face, but identifying that there are human uh, objects exist in the uh, photo. So if there are people walking in the street, so it will be able to understand that there, there are people in this picture and they are walking, okay? Or if kids are playing in the ground, so it will be able to detect the uh, kids images that's saying that kids are playing, right? Optical character recognition is a feature, which means it will be able to recognize the text from that images. For example, if you are giving the menu card of a restaurant, 
from that menu card, it will be able to recognize different uh, text, maybe the item name and price or something like that. So it can be a handwritten text also. So it may be printed text or handwritten text. Smart crop thumbnails means if you want to get the uh, thumbnails of certain images, it will be able to convert that image into a thumbnail. So that we can easily do by reducing the size of the image. But here it use a feature called the smart cropping. What is that smart cropping? Suppose if you are giving a large image where it contains some uh, important object, for example, if it is a uh, image of White House or Empire State Building with some other backgrounds. But instead of uh, creating a thumbnail of the full image, it will focus on the main object, maybe White House or Empire State Building or Taj Mahal or whatever is it. So it will focus on that particular object and then creating a thumbnail, making that as the base or that, in, that making that as the center of the image. So that means it will detect which is the main object in that particular uh, image and then creating a, uh, what to say, uh, thumbnail using that particular object. Background removal. So if you want to remove the background of uh, an image, so maybe uh, a, there is a person who is uh, standing in front of a garden, but behind there are some other objects, maybe people walking in here and there. So you want to remove that, you can do that. Okay, so you can just focus on the front front layer of that particular image. Multimodal embeddings. So embeddings typically means the uh, creating a vector for that particular image. So if you want to get the uh, embeddings of that particular image data, you will be able to generate that using the image analysis. Product recognition. If you uh, uh, say in previously it was called as brand recognition, something like that, which means if you are giving a t-shirt where it has a, a logo of Microsoft, so it can tell you that this, this is Microsoft because it's just a logo of Microsoft from the logo it will be able to detect that it's Microsoft or if it is uh, uh, Adidas or Puma or whatever it is from the logo or from the icons it will be able to detect what is that product and what is that brand. This can be used by creating a standalone AI vision service or a multi-service AI service. So if you want to consume the uh, in, uh, vision features from the Azure AI services, you can create a vision service, which is a standalone vision service, or you can create a multi-service uh, multi, multi model or multi-service resource, which means you just need to create a single uh, AI service which can be used for uh, uh, vision service, which can be used for language service, which can be used for uh, decision making and multiple purposes we can use the same service resource. But the vision service, standalone vision service, if you create, it is only used for vision capabilities. So the difference is if you go with a standalone service, standalone vision service, you will be charged for uh, that particular purpose, uh, sorry, particular service use cases. That means vision services billing will happen separately. 
any api calls coming to that vision service will be charged separately but in a multi service model or multi service resource i said there is only one service created and all the api calls will happen to that only for example if you want to call the vision service you want to call the uh, language service or you want to call the decision apis or you want to call the speeching service any service call you want to make it uh, use a single service so the problem is it will be a consolidated billing or it's a combined billing which means you cannot recognize from that how many vision apis calls happen how many speech service calls happen or how many uh, uh, language service calls happen because it's a combined billing any request which is coming to that will be counted as uh, a billing request which means whether it is a vision service request or whether it is a uh, what is speech service request it will be consider as a request what type of request is not considered so it will be a combined billing but if you need individual billing then you have to go for standalone services so while creating the uh, vision service or while creating the ai service you can decide whether you want to go for a multi service resource or a standalone vision service and right side you will see uh, some examples like how a caption is, and the tags are generated so whenever you upload an image uh, uh, to the to the vision service it will create a caption something like a mountain with a snow and there are tags like there is a mountain there is a snow there is out it's an outdoor image and so on so on, right and what are the different objects detected object detection is also a feature right so object detection means what are the objects detected there is a mountain which is an object in that image okay so if there is a text inside that the text uh, extraction feature that is optical character recognition will be able to read that text like a uh, uh, wish you wish you are here so if there is an uh, image of mountain where uh, you have written a caption something like a uh, uh, wish you were here so it will read that text using the ocr feature and since mountain is the main object in that particular image it can create a thumbnail using that mountain i can see that thumbnail which is created is focusing on mountain not the text and it is also go able to return the metadata of that image like what's the width height format the major colors used inside this whether it is contains any uh, um, what unallowed uh, things like uh, uh, violence crime sexual or anything uh, means it will moderate the content and the moderation information also will be returned this is how the image analysis feature is called using the uh, rest apis or programming sdks so if you have an application through which you want to invoke the uh, apis you can use uh, either the rest api or the programming sdk as you see uh, you while making the image analysis call you can specify what are the different features you want to extract like uh, i want to extract the caption the crop suggestions dense captions object people tags and text so if you mention text then it will apply the ocr functionality if you apply tags and captions then it will extract the captions and tags if you specify objects then object detection feature will be applied so that that means what is the what are the features you mention in the list those features and functionalities will be applied and it will extract the responses sdk defines 
the image analyzer then call the analyze function from it means if you are calling it through a programming language like a c sharp or java then you can create an instance of that image analyzer and then you can call the analyze method for that okay so here in c sharp you can see the example So here we are creating an instance of the analyzer and then using the analyzer we are calling the uh, analyze method. So you can see the analyzer when you create we will be passing the service options means what are the uh, different uh, parameters required for connecting to that particular service like a endpoint and the key for example where this service is deployed in which a subscription that endpoint of that particular service and also for authentication purpose there is a authentication key required so that will be provided as service options then image source means it can be the image path or image stream object and analysis options means you will be passing what are the different uh, analysis features you will be passing to it for example if i want to extract the caption objects tags people and text only then i can send it as the analysis option when you make a call to analyze function it returns a result in the json format but in in programming sdk it will be returned as an object so that object will contains the information about the caption text objects etc python also say same if you are using python for calling this you can use the sdk to make a call to the image analyzer then service options you will be specifying the endpoint and the key then vision source will be the image name image url or image stream and analysis options means what are the different features you want to extract and you will be calling the analyze function the same can be invoked using a rest api as you see if you are you trying to make a call from a language which is not supported supporting the sdk for example if you try to make a call from the c++ so from c++ you, you cannot make a call using the SDK because there is no SDK available for C++ language or PHP. So from PHP, if you want to make a call, there is no SDK available. So in such cases, you can make a call to the corresponding REST API URL. So the REST API URL is this one and you will be calling the analyze function, analyze function of the image analysis service and what are the features you want to extract the caption people and the model version is this one language is english api version is this and so on right so that you can make a request to the rest endpoint So image analysis options, you can specify not only the features, but also cross uh, cropping aspect ratios, gender neutral caption, language, model name, model version, etc. As you see here, this is how we make a uh, vision service uh, call. So when you make a call to the uh, vision service for uh, with a specific URL, you can create a image source or vision source by specifying vision source dot from URL and then you can specify the URL of that and in service options you will be specifying the endpoint and the key so we'll be creating a vision service options uh, instance by specifying the endpoint and key the image source will be the image URL and in analysis options you will be specifying 
the features features means in the previous slide we have seen what are the different uh, features we can uh, use like a generation of caption tags text analysis means ocr functionality or uh, object detection and so on so what are the features you want to include that list can be included here and we can also specify the language for the ocr and the general neutral caption need to be generated we can make true okay so same we can do using the python also the image analysis result is going to appear as a json so if you are making a call using rest api it will be appearing in the form of json but if you are making a call using sdk it will be returning as a object so it will be containing the informations uh, about the features that you have requested for example if you have made a request to generate a caption then caption result equal to the text value what is a text caption generated a man pointing at the screen and what is the confidence so 0 0.48 which means it's confident 0 0.489 which means 0 0.449 uh, right so that means that's the confidence level it is understanding the image which you have uploaded is a person a, a man image uh, who is pointing to the screen but it is not very confident so you can see the confidence level is uh 0 0.48 which means less than 50 percentage only but yes that is the top detected caption tags result which means what are the different tags detected so that list will be coming as a array as you can see here it's coming as an array of tags so name equal to what is a tag value that will come as a string confidence of the tag will come as a number between 0 and 1 then model version and metadata also return so which model version is used to analyze this image that information will return because depends on which model version we have uh, we made a request the the answers quality will be different because new models will have more capabilities older models will have a less features and functionality so which model is used to execute this request that models information will be returned and metadata is about the image so what is the width height and uh, other informations of that image like uh, what is the uh, most commonly used the color and uh, Mm, whether it is uh, black and white or not all those informations will be returned as metadata so now let's explore the features of vision in the vision studio so we can go back and explore this vision studio so we have already launched the vision studio as you see this is what the vision studio which help you to extract the informations from image so if you see we have already created a resource which is a cognitive service resource that is a multi uh, service uh, resource multi service resource means it will be it can be used for different uh, purposes so if you go back to the portal and check the resource group so here this is the standalone service which we have created which is face api which i have created through the azure portal and this is the one which we have created through the vision studio so if you remember vision studio when we used i have created this service and that time it's a service type 
was coming as multi service type. Right. So multi service account means the same service I can use for language service, speech service and other services. Right. So this is coming here as the uh, service and I can set this as the default service which will show here the currently selected resource is this one. And if you want to try this features, the commonly used features you can see under the featured list, like a, uh, recognize the products on shelf, search photos with image retrieval, add dense captions to images, remove backgrounds from images, add captions to images, etc. So there are different uh, features. But if you want to try some of the image analysis features, so we can go to the image analysis section. And here we have different uh, options. You can see some of the features are in preview, which means they are recently added and they are still in preview, but not yet uh, come into GA. So they are in the experimental mode, you can say. Okay. But there are some other features which are currently available here. Right. So, for example, so I'm trying to use this one. Extract common tags from images. If I click on this, it will take you to this one, and I can give an acknowledgement that I acknowledge that this demo will incur usage in our cognitive service because whenever we consume. It's going to use that model, right? So any request that I'm going to make uh, here, it is actually executed using the model which I have created. So it will be charging for me. Okay. So here we can use the pre-built product uh, or gap model, which is provided by them, or train our own custom model. It is also possible by providing the data set and train that model but we, we are not going with that we'll go with the pre-trained model or pre-built model and here i can choose any of this image see if i click on this photo this is a photo which contains the uh, three three people human faces and multiple objects there is a table laptop cup a chair and so many things so you can see here in the uh, result it's detecting these many tags can you see there is a there is a woman coffee or man computer laptop couch then sitting right so that means it is detecting different uh, tags from this image so you can take the first uh, 10 tags which is important okay so you can see the uh, percentage of this means the confidence level is showing here as the percentage or if you want to see that result in json format click on here here you will see the tag the result <coughs> and name equal to person and confidence level is 0 0.996, which means 99.6 percentage. There is a person. Clothing, 99.40. Furniture, 98.42. It's an indoor image, 96 percentage, right? So that confidence ratio you can see here. If you remember in the first module, we have discussed about confidence score which is which can be represented in the form of percentage right so this is extracting the tags so if you click on this image you can see it shows something if you want to try with your own image you can go and download like uh, images of kids playing in ground
okay maybe i can try this one i'll just download this image and then we'll upload this image what up on this file format is not supported what was the format oh it's a web p image Okay, let's try with this. Yeah, so here you can see it's analyzed. So clothing, outdoor, toddler, uh, tree, swing. There is a swing, right? You can see person, grass, outdoor play equipment. So that's because it's an outdoor play, right? So there's a playground, baby, child, right? you can see. So it's able to detect the common objects from this particular image, right? So you can use with your custom image also. But if you want to try some other feature, like uh, for example, if you go to image analysis, detect common objects. See here. You can see these are the objects mainly detected. So you can see the position of that. There is footwear, person, there is a laptop detected, this one, right? Seating, there are multiple persons, one, two, and three. So person coming in three places. So this is one person, this is another, and this another. There is seating and seating so there are multiple settings there is a table so which is detected here this is a it's actually a table detected here right so this is also returning the bounded box so object is detected and object is coming in which position that x y coordinates will be returned so there is a footwear identified and it is in this position x coordinate is uh, 6 and y is 360 so that means this one i think this this white one <clears throat> and this is a person a person detected in x coordinate is 104 y is 104 width and height right so that means it, i think it may be this one this person so it will be able to go and detect the images sorry the, detect the object within this image now let's try this one a removal of background See how clearly it has removed the background from this picture, as you can see. Or if you try this one. As you can see. Right. So now we'll try to upload our image. Right, so you can see it's uh, removed the background from that particular image. Right, so this these are some of the features that Vision Service is providing. If you want, you can try out all the uh, features here, like uh, creating a smart cropped image. Like if I select this. You can see it's or this one. 
see it's focusing this person this is the main area right or we can upload an our own image see focusing this objects so it has removed this area and right side uh, sorry left side also it has removed so it is focusing this main objects and creating that cropping right so that's what the vision service So there is a lab associated with that, which uh, through which you can generate the captions, create the tags, detect the objects and people, and also remove the background. So we can try to do this lab. So we let's let me go to. So if you are doing the AI one zero two session you can go and find out the uh, lab associated with that course so here i'll get this lab information just give me a minute Okay, I think it's starting this lab. So when you register for the AI 102 certification, you will get the lab key through which you can provision the lab environment and you will be able to complete the labs. So here you can see this is the uh, lab environment, lab VM provided. So I can go and log in. With the password. Now, to use this labs, we can either use our lab environment or we can use this lab instruction, or you can try this lab instructions in our local machine also. If you have all the softwares installed in your local machine, you can use your local machine also. In my case, I can go with both the options. If I want, I can try out the uh, uh, lab demos 
or labs which is available in my local machine or I can use this VM which is created. So if I go with. If I go with this in my local machine, I just need to execute this resources in our. Local environment or local machine. So for that first I can take this. Code. Let me take this. Copy this and if I open this. Command window, I'm doing it in my local machine. So I have cloned the resource. And. I can go inside this. Lab. And here you will see the lab files and instructions. So let me go to. Lab files. Inside this we will see different. Uh, labs available for that. So the first lab which is available is for the analyze images. So let me go to. Analyze images. And here you will see the sample code for Python and C sharp. So I'll go with Python. So here you can see the image analysis folder. Inside this, you will see the image analysis.py file. So, this image analysis.py file we can open in VS Code. So, I'll just open this in VS Code. See, this is what image analysis.py, where you can also see an environment file, env file. In this env file, we have to specify the endpoint and the key. So from where we can get the end, end, uh, endpoint and the key. Like any other Azure service, whenever you want to uh, authentic connect and authenticate to the service, it pro the, the AI service also providing the endpoint and the key. So if you go to the cognitive service instance which I have created, here is the key and endpoint, as you can see. So I'm going to extract this endpoint, which is here. I'll just copy this endpoint, putting into this endpoint section. And I can take this key. This is key one or key two you can use and put it into the key section. Save it. And if you go to the image analysis code, you have to import a couple of things here. So what you can do, you go to the lab instruction. From here, you have to extract the keys and endpoints. That is the step which is already done because from the keys and endpoint, we have grabbed this keys and endpoint and placed it. And then we have to prepare the uh, code. In case of Python, we have to install this vision service. So we can just go and install this pip package. So this pip package need to be installed. So in this path, I'm going to install this pip package. As you can see, it's installed this pip package. The next step is to go to the environment variable file and update the endpoint and the key, which we have already done. So we don't need to repeat this step. Step number four is to open this image analysis.py file, and we have to add this import statement. So here, 
we can add this import statement in this code. So we are importing the uh, AI dot vision into as SDK. But here you can see there are some other uh, packages also required, which we'll in install later. And analyze the image. So if I want to analyze the image in Python, we have to create a vision client. So CV underscore client is the vision client we have to create. So we have to take this code and put it inside uh, this. So here we have to create the vision client. So here you can see. Right, so we are creating a vision client because we have we are loading the environment variables file, reading the service endpoint and the key from the env file, and then we are setting this is our image. Okay, image file is already here. So street.jpg. This is the image we are going to analyze. Okay. So we are taking this is the image which I want to analyze, and then we are creating an instance of the vision client by using the a, a endpoint and the key. Now we are calling the analyze image function. As you see, this is the analyze image function, which is defined below. OK, so now what we are going to do, we have to complete the analyze image function. OK, so what are the different features we have to extract that we have to update? So let's go specify the features that we want to extract that we can specify here just by copying this and putting it here. So these are the different features we are going to extract like a caption, dense caption, tags, objects and people. Then we need to use this code to analyze this image. So I can copy this complete code. And put it here. So what it is going to do? We are loading the image first into the image variable SDK dot vision source and we are passing the image path and it is loading the image and then we are creating the image analyzer uh, instance SDK dot image analyzer and we are passing the vision client what image we have to analyze and the analysis options so it uh, returns the image analyzer. And then we call image analyzer dot analyze. So it returns the result here. The anal analysis result will come. And then we are checking if result dot reason equal to analyzed means if the result is coming as analyzed means analysis completed, we have to get the caption first. So result dot caption is not none. I mean, if the caption is existing, then we have to print the caption along with the confidence. If the dense captions exist, if the dense captions exist, then it's going to print those dense captions one by one here. Okay. And also we can uh, get the image tags, uh, objects in the image, and the people in the image. Also, we can get the image tags, image objects, oh, sorry, objects in the image and the people in that particular image. So let me go back. And what is a code? If I want to run without getting the tags or objects or people, I can directly run. But if you want to get those informations also, the tags also, you can go and get this tag. So get this information. 
So this is going to print the tags information. As you see, this is used to print the tags. So if the result dot tags exist, means if the tag is not none, which means the tags are extracted and it is going to print the tags one by one here. Similarly, I can extract the objects. So what are the different uh, objects extracted that also I can get? So the code is directly given. What you need to do is just paste this code here. Okay, so this is going to print the uh object informations in the screen and now we also want to locate the people in the image so for that we can take this code so if the result dot people is not none which means if the people found in the image then we have to get the people information also inside that Right. So now we are ready to run. So we can go and run this application. So for running, what you can do, you can just uh, specify this. Okay. Along with the file or without file, we can use. So if we are going to run this, Okay, so this module mathplotlib is not found. So we have to install some extra libraries. pip install mathplotlib. And also I think one more library we have to install numpy. Okay, NumPy, I think, anyway, installed along with that. Okay, it's already installed. Now let's rerun this and check whether is there any other dependencies required or not. You can see it's making a request and you can see it is analyzing this. And you can see it is generating the caption, a man walking a dog on the leash on a street. That is 82 percentage confidence. So that I will show you that image. This is the image. Right. And you can also see the dense captions, a man back walking a dog on the leash on the uh, street, a man walking on a street, a yellow car on the street, a black dog walking on the street, a blurry image of the blue car. So you can, if you see, these are some other captions which are extracted. And you can see the tags. There is, it's outdoor, land vehicle, vehicle, building, road, wheel, street, person, clothing, taxi, car, dog, and so many things, right? And objects in the image. So there is a car, there is a taxi, there is a person, there is a dog, right? So it's a detected. And the results are saved into objects.jpg. Let's see objects.jpg can you see it's a uh, tagged those objects also the person dog taxi and car so it is detecting and tagging those uh, objects and people in the image so it is detected one person in this image and you will be able to see that here you can see so you can see uh, there are some other people faces even it is very small it is detected but you can see there's the main person object which is detected so that's what the vision service is 
doing with the analysis. So with the image analysis, it is able to detect the uh, features like uh, creating captions, detecting the object, creating the tags, identifying the people in the image and so on. So in this lab, you have seen how the image analysis is used to extract information from the image. So now uh, what we do will uh, take a small break, uh, means small break in the sense so we'll take a lunch break since uh, I have to join another call. So we'll take a break of uh, 45 minutes and we'll continue the session uh, by 1.30. Okay, so we can now go for a 45 minutes break. After that break, we will be continuing the session from uh, this module only. The remaining portions of this module will be covered after the lunch break. Okay. So let's go for a break. So you can go and have your lunch and we'll continue after 45 minutes.
Hello. All are back. Okay, if you are back, can you give a thumb so that I can understand? Can you raise your hands? Okay, great. Okay. Okay, fine. Then let's start the next topic. So we were discussing about the vision service and uh, we are able to complete the image analysis feature of the vision. Now let's try detecting the faces with the Azure AI vision service. In this, we will be discussing about the face detection, analysis, and face recognition features of the vision service. So what is this image analysis feature? In this image analysis feature, we have seen that it is able to detect people. And uh, it is able to tell you in which position it is able to identify the uh, person, right? So I think uh, the previous example we have discussed, uh, a person was walking on a street with the dog and it is able to mark the location of the person and it is able to detect that there is a person but it is unable to recognize who is that person and it is also not able to tell you what are the facial expressions he has whether he is happy or sad or a neutral or something like that right so it's not able to tell you the facial expressions also it is not telling uh, whether he has wear a mask or uh, the the uh, specs or he has uh, he is bald or anything like that or his uh, uh, eye color or maybe uh, the skin color or something like that so, so it's not giving the complete details of that uh, face uh, sorry the, the person Right, so because the image analysis is just a primarily detecting whether there is a person and what is that location uh, in that particular image. So in which location it is able to detect the person. But we have a face service, face service which we have already provisioned. The face service is capable to analyze the face of uh, the given uh, person image and it will be able to detect the face. It will be able to analyze uh, the facial expressions and features. It can do the comparison of the face and also it can do the facial recognition. But understand you can see he here it is given a star. Because for doing the face comparison and identification and the face recognition, you need a special approval from Microsoft uh, for using the face API. Because this is something related to the privacy of the user uh, using the face for recognitions, comparing the faces with others. So they are uh, something related to the data privacy. So it will require a special approval from Microsoft to use face API for that. But yes, Face API is capable to do that, but if you want to use that features, you have to get special approval. But what we can do with Face API compared to the normal vision service, it can identify the location of the face. It can identify the attributes 
whether uh, uh, what is where is a nose eyes uh, what type of and no uh, sorry eye color skin color the hairstyle head positions and all the other things can be identified so con considerations for face detection and facial recognition if you see principles of responsible ai apply to all kinds of application <coughs> but systems that rely on facial data can be particularly problematic as a safeguard for responsible ai usage facial recognition identification verification and comparison is behind a limited access policy requiring users to be approved by, uh, by microsoft uh, before enabling these features so that means if you want to use these features of fa face api like uh, face recognition identification verification and comparison you need a special permission because of data privacy security transparency and fairness so transparency and fairness means users should be in, informed for what purpose we are using your images right so because i cannot go and use somebody's photo for uh, comparison or recognitions so they have to be informed that okay we are using these images for this purpose then only it will allow you to consume that services facial recognition should not have uh, should not be used in a manner that is prejudicial to individuals based on their appearance or uh, to unfairly target individuals so it means when you build an application it should not uh, harm anyone and it should be fair for everyone because yes if if I, what if i am using this uh, face api to identify the uh, black people and we have to uh, avoid black people from certain uh, scenarios so that should not happen so when we use a photo or when we use a face why we are using this what for what purpose it has to be clearly defined then only you will be getting permission for using that but yes the face service is able to tell you uh, some informations about the face like a face detection it will identify where the face is 